Hi guys, my name is Jacob. This is my first brewing video. Uh, I'm going to be brewing a Christmas ale using my Spiegel Braumeister uh, mash tun and brewing pot in one. I'll show you that later. I'm going to be brewing a Christmas ale using 2.5 kilograms or 5.5 pounds of pale ale malt, 200 grams or 7 ounces of caramel malt, and 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of caramel malt. Now, uh, this is a uh, recipe for 10 liters, that's about 2.7 US gallons. So you can just double that if you want more. Uh, I'm going to be adding 14 grams or 0.5 ounces of Cascade and Pearl hops for the entire boil of 60 minutes. Uh, 28 grams or 1 ounce of Pearl hops for half time, 30 minutes, that's for flavor. And 14 grams or 0.5 ounces of Cascade for 15 minutes, and that's for aroma. And on top of that I'm going to add another 14 grams or 0.5 ounces of Cascade for the last 5 minutes of the boil. Now the total boiling time as I said is uh, 1 hour 60 minutes. Uh, the mashing time is 2 hours. Uh, I'm going to mash in at 62 degrees Celsius or 143 degrees Fahrenheit. That's for 90 minutes and then I'm going to mash out at 78 degrees Celsius or 172 degrees Fahrenheit for the last 30 minutes. So I've uh, sanitized my equipment, it's all in the bucket here. Uh, you can of course use uh, Star San. Uh, instead I've used uh, Sandy Clean, that's pretty much a cousin of Star San. Uh, the only difference is that Sandy Clean does does have a little less uh, bubbles or foam. Uh, Star Sand foams pretty much, so it's well, whatever you choose, you use. So I'm going to program the correct temperature and time here on my Braumeister, and after that, I'll show you how it works inside. So this is how it looks inside. You've got a heating coil, I don't know if you can see that here. Uh, you've got a pump underneath, there's two holes in there. Uh, there's a prong, I think you call this. Uh, I'll explain that later. So what you do is you uh, isolate the malt. You isolate from the water because you don't, don't want uh, well grains and stuff stuck in the pump. So you put your malt in here, you put your water out, outside here. And the pump does the rest. Uh, so if you don't want the, the pump to stick, you put in a piece of metal and uh, some uh, netting here. And that will keep the malt inside where it's supposed to be and not floating around. Okay, I'm going to start pouring some uh, hot water in, uh, from the tap into the pot and basically I want it as hot as possible because uh, it will go faster to, the, to reach the set temperature of 62 degrees Celsius or 144 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I'm also going to put a, a color around the Braumeister to keep the warmth inside and that will also increase the uh, the speed or lessen the time of reaching the temperature. Now I don't know if you can see these markings but here's a 20 liter mark below that is 15 liters. Why I poured uh, 15 liters is because uh, basically a lot of water gets stuck in the grains so if you don't want to bother bother with sparging which I don't because I don't think it gives anything to the beer uh, I just poured in some extra water. So here's my setup. It's a monster mill. Attached to it is a drill and underneath is a bucket. So basically what happens is when the grains are crushed they end up down there. Here are all the grains. Hey, you got your pale ale malt, uh, carahel and carafal. Uh, this is going to be loud, so uh, lower your volume, and here we go. Oh. 
okay so that signal, signal is telling me that the water is ready so I'm just gonna pour the grains in there we go and I'm gonna grab my spoon and mix it all up, get it all wet. Here we go. All right. Now I'm going to add another screen. There it is. So I can make sure, of course, I failed the first time. That happens. Put the screen out. And redo. Wash it down quickly. Come on. Don't want no grains on the outside because they will clog up the pump. I've experienced that already. Not a pleasant thing. All right, here we go again. Let's try this side. Here we go. Okay and putting this one on to fix it in one place there we go all right and this one make sure it doesn't flow over and fix that Okay, and we're gonna press, okay, yes I have filled in the mold and start. And hopefully it will work. You probably can see the water rising inside here and it's dropping on the outside. And that's the pump going. And this process is going to go on for 90 minutes. Make sure all the grains are, you know, get out all the wort. And if you can, Try to pick off these little grains that are floating around the cup through, although you tried your best. Now the mashing is complete. I'm going to take out the malt pipe and let it drain. So all the wort that's stuck in the grains gets out. So I've started the heating up process to get it up to uh, 100 degrees so you can boil the wort. And while that's heating, the grains are still drained. So looks drained enough. Okay, put the lid back on. There are different ways to sterilize or sanitize your wort chiller. Now you can put it in the wort and let it boil with the wort. And of course by boiling it will be sterile. Or you can just put it in your bucket with the star sand or a sandy clean solution. And basically it will do the same. So I've got this bucket with the solution sitting here. So I'm just going to put my wort chiller in the solution. However, when I add hops to my wort I use these 
well, basically the grain bags, but cotton hop bags you could call them. Um, you can reuse these if you want, but I usually just throw them away because they're not worth the trouble. However, you can get uh, nylon uh, hop bags and they are quite reusable and uh, quite easy to clean. The wort has now reached the boiling point and I'm going to add the 0.5 ounces of Cascade hops and 0.5 ounces of Pearl hops. That's 14 grams of Cascade and 14 grams of Pearl. Now that hop addition is going to stay there through the whole boil and uh, it's going to be responsible for the bitterness of the beer. Well, I didn't get the camera up in time, but I added the uh, one ounce of pearl hops or 28 grams for flavor just a second ago. It's about 15 minutes remaining. I'm going to add half an ounce of cascade hops, that's 14 grams. I'm also going to add some yeast nutrients and protoflock. Well, I almost forgot my motion lotion, and this is a beautiful beer I made out of six row Pilsner malt and some Buda Vice Czechish yeast, lager yeast so Craig on Craig tube Craig on Craig tube here's to you man Time for the last hop addition. Here goes. And by the way, that was Cascade hops. I uh, revised or redone the, the recipe a little bit. I chose to add 20 uh, grams of Cascade hops or 0.7 ounces of Cascade hops. Now what do you think about that color? <sighs> That's what I call a beer. So I put my wort chiller in the hot wort. I've hooked it up to my uh, tap here. I'm going to run it on run it on really cold water. All right, so the temperature's down to 20 degrees Celsius and I'm going to pour the wort in. Make sure your spigot is closed. I think it is. Yep. Okay, here we go. In the end the original gravity was so low it was 1048 so I'm going to add one kilogram of dextrose just to get the alcohol up a little bit. Okay guys, uh, my battery is dying in the camera. I'm gonna add my yeast that I rehydrated before I started brewing. Then I'm gonna give it a, the whole bucket a good shake for five or ten minutes, maybe more. And then I'm just gonna, going to let it sit. After adding the one kilogram of dextrose or 2.2 pounds, uh, the original gravity ended up at 1070, so it's gonna, going to be a pretty strong beer. Um, just a shout out to Craig Tube, and uh, thank you for getting me started. Hope you enjoyed the movie, the video. Hope all of you enjoyed the video, and uh, let me know if you want to see more. All right, thanks. Cheers.